Here we go. All right. Um, I guess the main thing right now is I'm trying to get a release candidate of the KMS out, uh, the version 0.6. Um, just added a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so this should be the first version where uh, you can configure it to point to two validators. They will both send its signatures and it will send errors back to whichever one gets there second effectively through its uh, internal double signing prevention. Um, that's cool. Uh, it's got uh, concurrent admin stuff for EBHSM, so you can actually admin them while the KMS is running. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I guess the main thing you're all probably interested in is um, as part of writing it, I made a crate that's called Tendervent and contains, I think, uh, large parts of the domain model, uh, mostly for the RPC interfaces that Ethan mentioned. And let me see if I can share the window. Let's see. All right, yeah, can you see that? Really cool. Um, so yeah, this is a crate. This is docs.rs. It's like the standard Rust documentation site. Um, so yeah, there's uh, pretty much just a whole bunch of types that are part of the domain model. Um, this is all just for RPC, but if somebody wanted to use these for a Tendermint implementation, they would get uh, kind of like serialization for these types for free. Um, I'm pretty sure implements serialize on all of them, yeah. And so they all implement serialize and deserialize. So they could all potentially, uh, you know, um, deserialized as JSON or intended to parse JSON. Um, but yeah, like here's one of the types. But it's got time. Um, pretty much anything that could uh, have a type, I kind of made one for. Um, I think that's kind of standard practice in Rust. Uh, and pretty much all of them should kind of assert uh, the validity of uh, like the data they contain, right? So they're trying to make uh, invalid values unrepresentable and all that good stuff. Um, let's see, a good one, good example on is probably like block height. Um, so these all have uh, like methods for converting from the different types and then stuff like this, right? So uh, won't allow you to have a block height of zero. Um, so, I mean, a lot of these have been either a little bit of guesswork on my part or just an investigation of the Go code. Because uh, I know, like, yeah, like a lot of these um, were I64s and the amino, right? And there were bugs around uh, negative numbers, that kind of thing. So, um, so what, is, what is the, what's the actual, um like type for height here? Uh, this is it. Uh, it's a struct. It's, it's a struct. Yeah, it's right. Nice. With just one uh, integer, yeah. Cool. I guess it's pub on the inside, so I guess uh, when you do that, it doesn't actually really experience because I think then you're able to construct one. But... Tony, it's kind of hard to hear you sometimes. Is it possible to oh, yeah. the microphone pick up? Yeah, let me plug that in. Uh, Um, okay. All right. Uh, is that better? Much, much better. Okay, cool. Drastically better. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a good mic. Um, so, uh, let's see what else we got in here. Um, so there is this little EBCI module, but it has this here, noting there is a little crate if you want to uh, write an EBCI server in Rust. Um, so these are, this module is just as far as I can tell, like uh, all the types that uh, are used by EBCI. And I don't know if transaction is really an EBCI thing or not, but <laughs> like, uh, 
Yeah, um, so this what, what I guess I should probably show you what might be interesting is RPC clients. Um, yeah, so there is a fairly complete RPC client in here that will uh, use the JSON RPC interface and uh, get you all this sort of information here. Um, so no, besides just kind of clicking around the docs and showing you various stuff, if you had specific questions or were interested in uh, specific things in here or what. But, but uh, we, this is connecting to uh, a, a JSON API, is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, it's, yeah, hitting it over HTTP, grabbing the and, and what would be the sort of investment necessary to make it work with the uh, Amino or Protobuf? Similar type. Uh, um, so there's some. Yeah, let me show you that. Um, so there's some amino types in here. Uh, these are most of them are pretty much ones specifically relevant to the KMS. Would it still be a requirement to um, to use the amino types because is an amino being put above compatible? Sorry, what was that? Um, would it still be that's, uh, that's down the road, Marco. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as far as uh, Amino or Protobuf go, like, I haven't really touched much of that or done much of that. Um, it's, like, largely, uh, like, Ishmael uh, and mostly just start the one, the messages we needed that the KMS actually, uh, you know, responds to and generates. So, um, yeah, there's not, you know, there's huge parts of this, like, missing uh, <laughs> as far as, like, uh, just general uh, Tendermint stuff that's not remote signing. It's pretty much all going to be the stuff that's uh, in the RPC interface, and that's all JSON. Um, but it would, uh, yeah, yeah, it would be nice to have, uh, you know, all of the amino types. Um, like a lot of these are done more or less by hand, I think. Um, so they're not uh, like using like a schema language or anything. Um, so that would also be nice, I think. <laughs> there's kind of there's a fork of Prost, which is a Rust protobuf library that's uh, used to generate these. Um, so I don't really know what the plans are there for the future of Amino or Protos, but uh, yeah. I, I, if uh, there were more of these messages, I, I have some ideas of stuff to do in Rust <laughs> with them. The plan, I, I believe the plan is to move uh, fully to Protobuf 3 and to use the, the well-known type uh, any um, to achieve the kind of uh, interface-based encoding that Amino was going for. Yeah, cool. Okay, because I mean, so, something like what Tony was saying is something that I also had to deal with and is that right now go kind of defines the the types in the language and we don't have a kind of like proto file so what you are saying is that now by moving to uh, proto 3 we will have a proto file um well I mean, like a kind of we'll a, a proto file at some point right now the, the work that's being done is to make amino uh fully compatible with proto okay. 3 so there were a few things that like you know, Amino allowed you to encode types even if they weren't wrapped in structs. So now the library is being changed so that if you pass in uh, any type and it's not wrapped in a struct, it'll like wrap it in a struct for you so that it would actually correspond to some kind of um, protobuf encoded okay. thing. Right? Okay, and I think what, what, that, what then you'll always be able to make a protobuf file, or maybe we'll be able to like auto generate them from Go structs, um, and then we'll it, have it for other languages. Yeah, exactly. I think I think what. We'll... I mean, I've been suffering and probably it's the same Tony saying is that it would be nice to have a kind of language independent schema yeah, totally. documented in some external file. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we'll have, we'll, we'll be able to get to a protobuf file for every, um, for every type. That's uh, one of the stated goals of ripping Amino out. Just yeah. FYI. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so I've been, you know, basically wait in C mode for <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I think there's some cool stuff we could do with that potentially whenever uh, that's all done. Cool. Can you show us um, the block? 
Blockland and uh, Sue. Um, who's this? Probably Header is one of the more interesting things. Um, cool. Yeah, wow. So, and what's this hash type? Uh, I think the hash type, yeah, okay. I, okay, so it's a uh, enum. Um, I see. So it's like, yeah, this was a little, that was a little interesting. Um, <laughs> mm. So they're, they're enums for, for potential algorithmic agility there. But um, yeah, I guess right now they can have, yeah, there's this for all zero hashes. Um, I remember I did that offhand or something I needed it for. I think I think there actually might be places in in Tenement where we do that, where we have a not just not a zero hash, but actually like a nil hash, like yeah. an empty. Um, and that I, I think that actually might be a problem for. Oh no, it's a problem if it's in a list. There's some there's something with protobuf and not being able to have nils in a list or something like this. Can't remember exactly. But it's it's nice that um, Rust is gonna like force us to see where all those places might be and potentially more easily address it. Yeah. yeah. But um, this means uh, that's, like you're always copying around these hash values, right? Uh yes. Yeah, so these are yeah. I mean, all of these are own values effectively. So. Right. Um. I mean, they just get deserialized by Cerda, which is. The rest, the standard Rust serializer. Um, yep. I guess I contribute. Let's see. Um, so some of the more interesting ones I think are uh, like public keys. Let's see. Um, cool. So yeah, this is using sort of this kind of fun <laughs> uh, declarative uh, parsing of enums. Hmm. So. Um, some of these, it, it also has like alias, so it's like, so, um, yeah, it's doing these, so these are like type and value in the JSON, um, so it looks at this, and then it's like, if it's this, uh, then it's a 255.19 key, and if it's this, it's a sub key, 255.k1 key, um, I guess what did I just run into? Um, I think it was in the block results RPC endpoint uh, when their uh, validator changes. It used a slightly different, um, <laughs> like yeah. slightly different label for these. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because there's there's a difference between the ABCI, yeah. um, the ABCI uh, type typing and the uh, amino typing. So hopefully once everything is just protobuf, that will be consolidated too. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe this little like hack, it's, yeah. this isn't like, exported or anything, but it's like a little yeah. one that has slightly different um, <laughs> <laughs> So, but then it's just converting it into that other. Right. Down here, it's converting it into the same public key yeah. type as the other one I just showed you. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, I'm going to actually try to use it soon. <laughs> uh, I want to write some like monitoring utilities and uh, potentially like uh, block explorer. Every day is block explorer, I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully soon you will actually uh, use some of this stuff and see how it actually works out. Very cool. Um, so can we, sorry, can we see the, the validator itself? Uh, yeah. Um, Address, pub key, voting power, priority, cool. So again, all, all owned entities. Yep. And the public, what's the, oh, the public key type you were just showing us, but they're all statically sized arrays, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Well, so for these, I think the DC uh, internally they're the uh, the signatory mm -hmm. types, which are yeah, as you said, they're just uh, byte arrays internally. Cool. 
Can we see um, going back to the book? Sorry, I'm. I don't know if anyone else has any questions or as we're going through. Um, but if not, I can just keep pushing for things. Um, can we go back to the block? Yeah. It'd be cool to just go through all the things in the block. So the header is pretty straightforward. It's just hashes. Yeah. Uh, data, yeah. So that should just be transactions. Yeah, just another wrapper, yeah. I see. Um, so how is how are the... Can we look, can we see inside the data? Like how the transactions are, I guess, I don't know. Um, yeah, so I guess it's like this, the into back, when I do back of these transactions and the mm -hmm. transactions are just um, if, as bytes, like this is kind of a standard Rust thing for any, it's kind of like the duct type for <laughs> basically anything that uh, you can get a reference to a byte slice for. Um, so right. yeah, I mean, they're just opaque uh, internally. Um, so this will, yeah, you can get a byte vector, just borrow it. Um, but other than that, yeah, they're just yeah, all opaque. Um, so is, yeah, just bytes. So, sorry, what was the that declaration there? <clears throat> that um, so this is showing it's like a tuple struct, but the uh, the interior is private. The interior is private. I see. Uh, so you can either convert it to a byte vector, borrow a uh, byte slice from it. And you create it from something that can become a vector of bytes. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Cool. And then, so what does that mean for the ownership of transactions in the block? Uh, well, everything's in, so internally, um, yeah, if I move. Yeah. So the int of vec basically returns an owned vector type. Yep. Um, so in here, yeah, that's here. Yeah, so it's just evacuated. Right. So I should probably say VCI application. Oh, yeah. Cool. I guess, yeah, the main thing it's deserializing for the space 64. Yep. Alrighty. Um, anything else interesting in here? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just. Uh, Evidence is kind of going to be the same, but I guess now it's a. Uh, it's an enum. Uh, no, it's just a kind of another opaque struct. Hmm. So yeah, just another, oh, and a uh, vacuum of evidence. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, let's, yeah. So this let's might see. be the most interesting. Yes, this is not exported out of the crane right now. Um, probably should be. <laughs> Let's see. So this is like um, you'd be able to access this, but you can't store it or do anything with it, which is pretty much just an oversight. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, otherwise, block ID. Yeah, I guess these are. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And oh, that's uh, it's supposed to be a parts header, not the. Is, that's not the same as the block header, is it? This is yeah. This is block parts header. Yeah. Parts header. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And so, uh, and the commit. Do you have you have you done any like commit? Validation or verification logic? Um, no, let's see. What is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and some of those came from the amino types for what it's signing. Um, I remember I have to probably look over here 
or something. Um, Census message. Yeah, a lot of this I just not right. Um, see. I see Scottish male fingerprints all over it. Um, <laughs> where is that from? Validate. Okay, let's see for your validates. Oh, cool. This is this is all for for the KMS validation, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So may, maybe an interesting thing for one of us to try to take on is to write um, something that tries to validate a commit against a validator set. It, it looks like you have all the all the types here. Basically, it's just yeah, about yeah. checking the logic and yeah. So can we can we go back to the uh, last commit, the last thing in the block? Uh, let's see. And the so oh the, you're saying the pre commits aren't exported, so we can't really do anything with them. Uh, let's see where those. I guess they would be in block. Um, yeah, they're probably just missing a pub. Let's see. Can it? Yeah. Oh, huh. okay. So they're here. Is this module just not exported? Is that what's going on? Yeah, okay. So this just needs a pub. Cool. But uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Otherwise, yeah, okay. Yeah, if I go to option vote, vote, do. Right. Top level of the finger, I think. Yeah. Vote. Um, cool. Um, yeah, that's straightforward. Very cool. Great. And so what have you been using? Have you been using your RPC client? Not yet. <laughs> yeah, we got some plans for stuff to do with it, mostly just uh, like monitoring and potentially block explorer kind of thing. Um, right, right, right. Yeah, I guess seeing you know, all play around with it and trying to actually make something with it. Cool. Um, yeah, what else? Anyone else have any questions or want to see anything? So right now, yeah, this is all in this subdirectory of the KMS, but uh, I think it might make sense now to uh, pull it out and stick it in the repo potentially. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, what, like, I have only a quick question that I think it would be nice. I mean, because we, we have discussed like before um, that Swagger in Cosmos, but I think it's, it's kind of the same thing here. Um, sometimes we have like issues in JavaScript. Do you see kind of an opportunity to export this to Wasm and also have kind of a library in Wasm based on a single Rust code base? Yeah, um, I brought that up at one point and I think uh, the plan was to do the same sort of idea but with the uh, Go Amino code. Um, but if you wanted to do, if you wanted to do the same thing with Rust, uh, Rust definitely it's very nice as a uh, source language for Wasm. So. Okay. Yeah, that, that, I mean, at, at least from my perspective, that would be super cool. 
Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I think there, there's a handful, well, you can shut them all off with cargo features, but uh, there's a handful of the dependencies right now that aren't WASM friendly. Um, it's mostly for secret connection, like the cryptography stuff uh, uses like assembly right now. Um, but there are, there are finally some pure off scripts for things like ChaCha20. Uh, that we could potentially swap out if you wanted to have the whole thing compiled to WASM. Hmm. Cool. Uh, so is uh, is anything still missing on the for talking to the RPC or it's, I mean it seems like you've got pretty um, much everything there. It's just a matter, yeah. matter of like now starting to implement logic like verification and algorithms. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I think most of the RPC endpoints are here. Um, Very cool. I'm not sure if there are any that are missing. Should be pretty much all of them, I think. Um, do you have the, oh yeah, they, so they take heights. Yeah, cool. And what is response here? Uh, so this is, yeah, what do we got? Um, each of each endpoint has a response. That's, I see. Uh, so I guess maybe. Seems like different. there was an odd one out. Yeah, the Genesis just has uh, oh, a few of them are just, they're not called response, they're called something else. Yeah, they're all response, but they're, uh, you know, they're each namespace on a different module for the different endpoints. Um, right. So here is Genesis. Yeah. yeah. Genesis is Genesis, yeah. yeah. Cool. This is awesome. Really good uh, basis. I, it looks like everything's here. Right, Thank you, Tony. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any uh, like thoughts or suggestions or um, I don't know wisdom for us working with this? Or um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like yeah, I think well, it just maybe extracted into a separate repo. Um, Right. Then, you know, I could imagine a Rust implementation of Tendermint consensus, uh, you know, kind of using these as kind of the base domain model types. Um, right. And then you would get at least the existing serialization that's there for free. Yeah. But yeah, all of these should, pretty much all of them should implement serialized, which is the survey, uh, right. survey type. So this will, yeah, let you serialize as JSON. Do you have any, um, do you have any of the hashing implemented, like the transaction hashing to? Uh, yeah, um, well, so let's see, what, what is here? Um, there are a few things we actually needed for the KMS. Let's see, what are those under? Uh, I think it's under like node. Um, no, that would not be it. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Hmm. What do we got? Um, let's see, what is a good one? Um, it's mostly just things like, uh, just sort of like the key fingerprints. Um, <laughs> like that's right. Well, the most complicated thing in the hash is, yeah, it's got like these, um, it's like it's mm. you know, by its, uh, I think, yeah, and each of these have an ID, let's see, so there's count, I think, has an account ID, um, yeah, that's 
skipping it from the hex. Um, some of these that do compute key fingerprints. Count ID. Sorry, what what's a account about? Is that like for Gaia accounts? Uh yes. Um, so it's if you have account keys, uh, like the suck PU keys, it'll right. compute the fingerprint of those. So yeah, this is the same thing with uh, the computer IDs. Um, cool. so the FK5519 keys. Um, Trying to find where it actually hashes something. <laughs> Let's see. Right. Uh, and I think it might actually be in the public key. Hmm. That actually happened. Um, uh, but yeah, these sort of things. Let's see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Other than that, it's not competing Merkle trees or anything like that. So right, right. It's pretty much yeah, the stuff the KMS actually needs right now. Right. That is there. So. Cool. And what and what so what's consensus about? Um. So there is especially just this like consensus state, uh, which. Yeah, you're just some fun stuff. Um, so this is, I mean, it actually, the KMS uses this to uh, do double signing detection. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So this is all sent in both the messages it's signing like for the pre votes and pre commits, and then it's what gets persisted to disk. Um, mm. It's like the, uh, it's the file, well, it's the proof validator state file or whatever. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, so it, it persists that uh, and uses it to detect total signing. Cool. Okay. Um, this is great. Any, any questions from anyone else? I guess. Um, yeah, oh, okay. Sorry, go for it. Use like how much of this could we reuse to implement a light clients? Like, how do we know that these types are are well formulated? And um, and yeah, as, as someone who doesn't know much about Rust, it's just wondering about next steps. Well, we can. Um, I mean, the whole RPC client is there, so we can start trying to test that against a real Tendermint node to fetch the data that you would need to actually like be a light client and then all the, the validator types are there and the vote types are there and the signature types are there. So then we can start writing the algorithm to like verify that, you know, a commit came from a validator set and try to update validator sets and actually start implementing the light client logic. So it looks like, you know, we could actually just start with the, the algorithm and all the data types are already there for us. That's so cool. That's I mean, it seems like it hasn't, it hasn't been fully tested. So there might be some kinks to work out against the RPC, but Otherwise, like from what I can tell, most of the, you know, everything else is in place, but you know, we'll have to implement like the Merkle hashing and the, um, the like validator set update and, you know, checking that two thirds signed and stuff like this. I suppose one of the first steps is going to be to break it out into a separate repository practically. Um, how much, uh, Tony, how much work would it be to, to do that? Uh, it's pretty easy, I think, cause you can, uh, like do the, like get subtree will pull all the entire history of the repo, just the subdirectory out. Hmm. So if you want me to, yeah, if you make a repo, I can like dump the relevant parts of the repo's history into a separate repo and push that out. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Cool. Let's figure out. I mean, uh, well. Yeah, let's, let's maybe try to map it out a little more. What 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 it's going to look like, and what um, the different crates are going to be for different purposes. We'll consolidate as much as possible, but um, yeah. It also it oh, sorry it'd also be really cool to look to see some of the uh, the connection stuff and how how you're doing that or handling asynchrony and. Uh, so there isn't any asynchrony right now. <laughs> so let's see. 
Okay. Secret connection is uh, it's uh, fully synchronous. It's using clocking I/O. Um, all the Rust async stuff has been in flux forever, and it's finally, finally, uh, <laughs> like stabilizing. They're they stabilizing. They they just announced the schedule. It'll be Rust one dot thirty eight. Due out in August, should have a stable async await, which will be amazing. The big, big blocker, and then we'll be able to use out of Tokyo. Um, so, other than that, right now, yeah, everything's just in terms of the core uh, Rust, like read and write traits, which provides blocking IO. Um, not, yeah, this was mostly all of a um, I did a uh let's see i added a few little things in here recently i added uh this blacklist of all points that contain low order elements uh which was uh like this is one of the mitigations for the abandonment of vulnerability um it's also now mm -hmm. checking if the computed shared secret is all zeros yeah right here um, so yeah, so that, the, this is kind of the band-aid for that random vulnerability, uh, and Anzaki is a PR to add a transcript hash. But, uh, but mm -hmm. otherwise, yeah, I mean, this is what the KMS is using. Um, I guess the other fun thing with this is, uh, it's supposed to have, like, Folks to do peer verification for the validator. Um, but these keys right now are ephemeral, <laughs> or they, they change every time it boots. Um, so I guess it would be good on the Tenderman side to get these to be either like the same as the existing node key um, or at least persisted. Um, <laughs> Right. Cool. Anything else from anyone? I guess one other quick thing. Um, so it does have this. Uh, this is a live integration test of the RPC client. Um, it's intended to hit a local. Cool. Uh, I, I've been testing against Gaia, but um, so you have to get this is a cargo feature, so you have to do cargo tests dash dash features equals integration. So it doesn't run by default. Um, you have to do both integration and RPC. Uh, hmm. But if you enable both these features, it hits uh, local guy in live. So if the RPC interface does change, um, you can test it live against random guy. Cool. Uh, it changes in the last release. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Yeah, um, yeah, so I guess there are, I think there's an open issue. Um, there's that. Yeah, I can see it's. Um, so, yeah, I guess what's in here is probably a little bit out of date and needs to be synced up with the latest release. I don't right. know, tell me. <laughs> cool. Or do you do you know offhand if there's any major changes that need to happen to be in the RPC? It's just the the block results. I think it's just the block results response. Okay. The field names were like the JSON names were camel case, so it's they were yeah, fixed. So for that, what I did. Um, let's see. Uh, RPC results, right? RPC. 
Well, uh, only blockers on snow. Where was that? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Um, regardless, what it was, oh, let me look. Uh, it was something I did fairly recently. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, I did those as aliases. Um, Uh, okay, block results. What do we got here? Um, yeah, maybe it wasn't there. Um, they should be implemented as aliases, so it should just be compatible with either API. Um, might have been. This one. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's these versus AB, okay, ABCI response. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, so these are, these are just marked as aliases. So either this name or that name will work. Uh, so yeah. It should, it should just be compatible with both versions. That's sweet. Cool. I guess that pull request is one of the ones that just landed. Yeah, yeah. 3708. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we don't necessarily have to remove it, but, you know, maybe when right. everybody's upgraded, uh, that makes sense. Cool. That's really nice that you can just. Uh, we got those aliases like that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, any, anything else anyone wants to see or ask? Otherwise, maybe we'll wrap up a little early. Cool. Well, thanks, Tony, for taking us through this and for having built it in the first place. <laughs> really great foundation to start with. So yeah, looking great forward to, to getting our hands dirty with it. Yeah, cool. Cool. All right. Thanks. I'm going to stop the recording.